Welcome to the Situation Update for Sunday, November 29th, 2020. And I, I said previously I wouldn't do these on Sunday, but you know what? This is a very special Sunday, isn't it? The, all these Sundays, until we secure the Republic, all these Sundays are very special. So frankly, as long as I can convince my staffers to, uh, <laughs> to open up their laptops on Sundays and also you know edit and upload and, and do the thumbnail graphic and everything, I'm going to go ahead and record these on Sundays as well. So there's a lot coming to you today. And again, thank you so much for joining me. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, naturalnews.com. I apologize for the length of yesterday's, which went to an hour and a half. I'm really going to work to keep today's under one hour. I, I do respect your time. I'm not trying to drag any, any of this out. It's just that there's so much happening. It's like, how do we actually cover it all? And I keep thinking, surely there won't be that much happening on a Saturday or, you know, Thanksgiving day or whatever, but, but there is. And so, so let's just jump right into it here. Uh, first, I want to make you aware that my interview with monkey works. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how he likes to be called monkey works that went live uh, on. Um, yeah, that went live Friday afternoon, but I didn't publish a story about it until yesterday. And if you haven't yet seen that video and, and read the, um, the highlights from that interview, it's very, very interesting. And Monkey and I are keeping in touch now about anything else that he sees. If he flags some other uh, military flights or a peak in flights to Gitmo or something, he's going to alert me and I'll bring it to you and we'll do another interview with him and so on. So definitely watch that. This guy is, you can tell he's a high IQ, uh, patriotic individual who has become an expert in monitoring a real time public source flight data, and then drawing real world conclusions from those data about what's actually happening geopolitically speaking. So definitely check out that interview. It's also on brighton.com. Now, we've got a lot of breaking news about things that are happening in the courts. And much of it is, is good news, even though the media is trying to portray it as bad news. Let me give you a specific example. The United States Court of Appeals for the uh, Third Circuit or what's commonly called the third district circuit court has rejected uh, Trump's case in Pennsylvania. And the media of course says, Oh, it's rejected. You know, Trump lost. It's thrown out. And uh, it doesn't, you know, there, there's nothing here. Now remember in yesterday's situation update, I said specifically, I said this was probably rejected on purpose because the rejection reason doesn't even make any sense. It was probably rejected in order to speed its way to the Supreme Court. And guess what we found out today? The, the person spearheading that rejection was none other than U.S. Federal Judge Stefanos Bibas, who was appointed to that court by who? Ah, Donald J. Trump. We have a Trump judge in the Third Circuit who rejected that lawsuit uh, very, very quickly. For what purpose? To push it to SCOTUS. Yes, to speed it along to SCOTUS because the clock is ticking. So it's on its way to SCOTUS. And uh, of course, the Supreme Court will accept this. That's, that's just a formality at this point. And it's going to hear this. And what you're going to learn here in today's situation update is that Sidney Powell has... Whoa. I mean, I hate to overuse the term bombshell because we keep, I keep hearing it. I keep using it. So I don't know what's bigger than that, but Sidney Powell has big bada boom bombshells that are coming that she's been keeping out of the view of the, of the public. Big explosion. This is what's about to happen for reasons that I will explain uh, here in this podcast involving the 305th battalion which is military intelligence responsible for cyber warfare. Yes, the 305th Battalion is linked to this, and in fact, linked to Sidney Powell in ways that are going to rock the world. I find it interesting that the 305th Battalion is in fact the military intelligence branch of all of this that has access to the, <laughs> to the uh, transactions, the financial transactions that, that expose uh, sex trafficking, which is known to be one of the, the the final chapters of how Trump is going to deal with the deep state. So first, Trump 
uh, defeats Biden, secures his second term, and then in his second term, Trump continues to use Kraken and other cyber warfare uh, mechanisms or cyber intelligence, military intelligence mechanisms to take down the, the sex traffickers, which he's already begun to take down actually for the last two years. And the way to do it is to follow the money, follow the money, because much of this money ends up being uh, recycled back into Democrat campaign funds and printing fake ballots in China and all these other things. So it's really all interrelated. And I know that Q likes to talk about numbers, you know, and it likes to use numbers and symbols to indicate things. So I thought I'd just look that up for the fun of it. It's kind of interesting. Anyway, watch for the number 305 uh, because that's the, that's the battalion that is actually known as the Kraken. And I'll get to that here in a second. All right. So we, we know that some of the courts are rejecting these lawsuits in order to speed their way to SCOTUS. We know that. We also know, now here's something new, that Sidney Powell's lawsuit in Georgia specifically claims that the use of Dominion voting software uh, with all the ballot stuffing and the vote rigging and altering the votes uh, illegally gave Joe Biden his lead in, in the state of Georgia and also in other swing states. Now, this lawsuit asks the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Georgia for an quote, emergency declaratory judgment that voting machines be seized and impounded immediately for a forensic audit. So you understand the significance of this, that if these Dominion voting machines, or specifically the tabulation machines, that were connected to the internet, that have the back doors in them, so that uh, CIA could come in and alter votes, and uh, maybe bad faith actors from China or Iran or other places, maybe Venezuela, who knows, but that these back doors existed, then if you could seize these machines and then air gap them from the internet, you could then forensically audit them and perhaps look at their source code and you could find the back doors and you could prove this in a court of law. So she's asking the court to demand that these machines be seized. Well, uh, Earlier today, no, I'm sorry, yesterday on uh, Stephen Bannon's War Room show, it's called War Room Pandemic, uh, the New York City Police Commissioner, Bernard Carrick, he said that there's now enough probable cause, which he referred to as PC, probable cause to seize Dominion voting machines. And he believes that this will happen as early as tomorrow. So, Oh, and, th and then he stopped himself from talking. He didn't want to say anything more, but he indicated that he knows a lot more. He just didn't want to say it. He wasn't comfortable saying it yet. So you can imagine that right now today, the Dominion company is frantically, frantically trying to get these Dominion tabulation machines back online so they can alter them and wipe clean all of the proof of how they rigged the votes. So in the process of doing this, guess who's monitoring them? Oh, uh, three, 305th Battalion, <laughs> Department of Defense, and Kraken. So now not only are these uh, bad actors, the Dominion Voting Systems people and the CIA server farms, if any are still operating, all these bad actors, not only were they caught rigging the votes, they're now about to be caught trying to cover their tracks trying to erase the crime. In other words, it's the cover-up that they're going to get caught in as well as committing the crime itself. So this is double proof now that they committed the crime once they're caught doing this. And this is going on right now. Now, obviously, they won't be able to connect to every tabulation machine because these machines are in many states, in many places, in cold storage now. They're offline. And there are probably a lot of frantic communications going on right now to try to get election officials at the local level to go up to these machines with thumb drives and overwrite the operating systems and things like that. Well, guess what? All those communications can also be monitored by the NSA and elements of the DOD. And that's yet more evidence that a cover-up is underway. We're also getting word that a lot of these state election officials are getting really nervous as they hear about treason, you know, and 
Trump just ordered the DOJ to issue a new statement, which they did, or a new uh, regulatory uh, framework, which they did, that now legalizes death by firing squad and death by hanging. So now I guess every time that us patriots talk about uh, treasonous actors being publicly hanged to death, it's no longer just hyperbole, is it? It's actual policy at the, <laughs> at the DOJ. I laughingly say because I'm not even sure where we're going to find enough rope for all these traitors that are going to come out of this. Uh, I'll get to that, though, in, in a little bit. I just wanted to point out that plenty of people are getting nervous now, and they are stepping forward, and they're contacting Trump's legal team and Sidney Powell, and they're saying things like, and by the way, Sidney Powell's confirming this, and Lynn Wood has talked about this a little bit. These people are saying, hey, um, I didn't know this was going to be treason. I didn't sign up for treason. I signed up you know, to, to double run some ballots or allow some stuffed ballots to come into the building or whatever. I didn't sign up for treason. And so they're coming forward, which is why Trump's attorneys are uh, overflowing with affidavits and whistleblowers and witnesses, many of whom are Democrats, by the way. And this is another trend we're seeing is a lot of Democrats stepping forward and talking about what they see and what, what they were ordered to do. So another important thing to realize here is that if you, if you seize these Dominion machines, and you still have the physical ballots that made up the election in a place like, let's say, Wisconsin. You've got the physical ballots. You've got the machines. A remedy to decide this could be that you order, let's say, the military to go there to re-tabulate all the physical ballots on those machines, making sure they're not connected to the Internet. And if you do that, guess who wins? Trump wins because you don't get the shutdown and the 4 a.m. you know, dumping of, oh, 200,000 magical votes for, for Biden in the middle of the night. That doesn't happen because those votes are not tied to ballots. This is what's crucial to understand. The physical ballots that do exist that are held in storage, those physical ballots combined with the Dominion machines or the other companies' machines, they can prove that Trump won those swing states merely by rerunning them under the control of some authority, such as the military, that will not cheat. And if you're not connected to the Internet, then the CIA can't log in and alter the votes and add the extra votes for Biden. So you could literally at this point, especially since the CIA server farm in Frankfurt has been taken down in that firefight, and we have additional confirmation that that took place, I'll, I'll mention that in a minute. But if you were to recount the ballots through the machines so that they are not connected to the Internet, Trump would win even without discarding the fraudulent ballots. In other words, see, the election fraud was multi-layered. Yes, they had massive numbers of fraudulent ballots and fake mail-in ballots, ballots that were printed in China, ballots that were harvested from mental institutions, ballots where they faked a bunch of you know, mail-in veterans ballots, and they marked them all for Biden. Ballots where it's the same signature on thousands of ballots right in a row. All these fake ballots. Even if you run all those, Trump still wins. The only, see, Trump was winning by so much that they had to stop the counting and fudge the numbers with a remote login. That's what the spikes were at 4 a.m. in Michigan and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, and then later on in Georgia and so on. That's what the spikes were. Those were the remote manipulations. There are no physical ballots tied to those remote logins and remote manipulations. So you see this strategy of, that, that Sidney Powell has put in her lawsuit of requesting the court to secure the physical Dominion tabulation machines, this strategy is accomplishing two very important things that no doubt I think are, were probably recommended by the 305th Battalion. Number one, it's going to force Dominion and state criminal election officials to try to cover their tracks and thereby get caught covering up their crimes. And secondly, once the machines are secured, you can recount the physical ballots in any state 
without the interference of the server farms from the CIA overseas. In either one of those cases, you now have proof that Trump wins. Okay, so, so again, looking at Sidney Powell's lawsuits, you need to understand that Sidney Powell is not acting alone. And this is one of the key reasons why Trump team, why they announced, remember, a week ago or whatever it was, that Sidney Powell does not work for the Trump legal team. She's not with us. She's acting independently. She's on her own. She's filing her own lawsuits. Why did they need that? Because they had to distance her from official White House policy because Sidney Powell is a member of, the, of Trump's private intelligence group, which is headed by General Michael Flynn and which has ties to the 305th Battalion, where expert witnesses from the 305 are being provided to Sidney Powell to drop big bada boom bombshells in the court when the day comes for that. And so when you look at Sidney Powell and you read the Georgia complaint that she authored, at first, you're reading that and you're saying, whoa, this sounds crazy. How is she ever going to support these claims? She says the machines were designed to have back doors where Iran and China were able to log in and alter votes and alter outcomes of elections, right? If you read that and you haven't heard any evidence yet of how that happened, you might think she's crazy. But she isn't. She wrote those in the complaint because she's going to produce witnesses from connections with the 305. These witnesses are military intelligence contractors and analysts. One of them I, I named yesterday, and he's, he's worked with intelligence communities for, what, 30 to 40 years? And he is going to be one of many key witnesses, and there are many more to come. What's going to happen once this hearing gets before SCOTUS? Sidney Powell is going to drop the Kraken, who are really bombshell military expert witnesses who have irrefutable evidence that the whole thing was rigged, that it was massive fraud, that it was coordinated, and that it happened on an international you know, foreign interference basis, compromising the United States elections infrastructure. That's what's coming. But you're not going to see this until until Sidney Powell gets in front of the Supreme Court. So until then, you're going to have to, I suppose, have a little bit of faith in Sidney Powell and military intelligence and uh, Trump and, you know, Team Trump, whatever. You, you might have to wait a little bit to see the bombshells that she has. Because remember, these people aren't going to tip their hand in the media, Tucker Carlson. <laughs> She's not going to come on your show, Tucker, and just lay out her all her evidence before she gets to the Supreme Court. And Tucker's a fool for thinking that she would. She's not going to do that. She's saving it. You save the big guns for the right moment. Remember what I said yesterday, the Swinsit analysis. Timing is everything. That's one of the principles of the art of war. Timing is everything. When do you unleash the big guns? You do it when you're in front of Thomas Alito. Kavanaugh, right? Uh, uh, Barrett and Gorsuch. That's when you drop the big guns. You do that because you cannot give the, the lying media, including Fox News, you can't give them days to react to your big weapons and to then bias the Supreme Court. You unleash these weapons at SCOTUS for the first time, and then you send the media scrambling to try to cover and try to figure out how they're going to, you know, cover that, cover that angle, whatever those big guns are, you know, here's, here's the bombshell proof. Here's the server logs. Here's the vote theft. Here are 12 witnesses who saw it happen. Here's the source code. These are the lines where the theft happened. Oh, and we have a signed confession from CIA director, Gina Haspel, <laughs> by the way, you know, maybe as an example, I'm, I'm hoping that's the case. I guess we'll find out. When SCOTUS hears that, it's going to be, you know, well, pound the gavel. This is over. Election deemed <laughs> irredeemably tainted. Remember that term? I've been talking about it for a few days. The election is deemed irre ir irredeemably tainted, and Joe Biden is disqualified by cheating, or maybe they kick it back to Congress for a state-by-state -state vote. 
in a what's called a contingent election. So this is what's happening with the evidence, and this is a little bit of the relationship uh, between the 305th Battalion, Michael Flynn, Sidney Powell, the expert witnesses, and the Kraken program. Now, as, as Sidney Powell begins to unveil this evidence um, in front of the Supreme Court, and this is likely to be happening you know, in December, let's say, sometime maybe before Christmas, I hope, uh, you're going to see several things happen. Number one, you know, we, we've talked about these betting sites where you can bet on Trump uh, winning, or I guess you can bet on Joe Biden winning too. Uh, one of our users recommended to me some uh, a betting site and said that the odds right now are 30 to one. So if you bet $1,000 on Trump and Trump wins, you get paid $30,000, right? Now, Understand that I don't engage in betting. I don't do sports betting. I don't know anything about sports, frankly. And I'm not a betting kind of person. And I'm absolutely not encouraging you to engage in betting. You could lose everything that you bet because they could still pull a wild card. Maybe they assassinate Trump and it's over or something. You know, maybe maybe they threaten his family in some credible new way. And he pulls a Ross Perot and, and, and just throws in the towel. I don't know. There are scenarios where Trump could you know, be taken out. I, I pray to God that doesn't happen, but I can't give you any kind of obvious you know, betting advice. I'm certainly not going to do that. But the reason I mention this is because once this evidence comes out in court, you're going to see the betting odds just dramatically swing back the other way. There's going to be, dare I say, pardon my language, there's going to be an oh shit moment. <laughs> it's going to ripple across the world. And, and during this oh shit moment, uh, the betting odds are going to wildly swing instead of, you know, 30 to one payout on Trump. It's going to go maybe to more like one to one, you know, because suddenly it's going to become obvious to people that Sidney Powell has compelling, irrefutable evidence that this thing was rigged. And this is going to happen. Boom. Very, very quickly. And by the way, on a personal note, I may yet, even though I'm not a betting person, I may place a bet on this. If the, if the payout stays about 30 to one, or better, I may go ahead and do it. Why not? It, it's not even about the money because whatever money I win is kind of inconsequential in the big picture. It's more like making, making the people who bet on Joe Biden pay a price for being wrong. That's, that's the beauty of it. It's, it's more like bragging rights. It's not, it's not even about the money. I just throw $1,000 in, you know, and see, yeah, maybe you, maybe you win 30,000 or you might lose the thousand depending on what happens. But wouldn't it be a great story to say, I took $30,000 from a bunch of Joe Biden supporters who believe the mainstream media, basically, it's a tax on stupid people. You know, it's, it's a tax on people for being wildly misinformed. And think about the odds being 30 to 1 right now means that most people believe that Trump has no chance or, or virtually no chance. They are wildly misinformed. Trump has, by my estimation... A far better than a 50-50 chance at this point, maybe more like an 80% chance in my view, maybe better, maybe 90%. So it's not a bet if you have information that other people don't have, information that gives you an edge. It's not a bet. It's a strategic investment as far as I'm concerned. Also, as this evidence is introduced, you're going to see something else. You're going to see nationwide calls for Joe Biden to concede and I'm starting to echo that call right now. Joe Biden, you should concede because you cheated. You cheated. All your supporters, I mean, your, your team, your globalists, your handlers, they all cheated. CIA, they all cheated, which means you're a cheater. You didn't win. You cheated. And you should concede. Now, I did hear from a source today. I, I don't know if this holds any water or not, but I, I heard from one source, it hasn't been confirmed with any other source, that Joe Biden may be in talks to concede in exchange for immunity. It sounds like something that's just a rumor, so I wouldn't put much weight on it yet. However, once Sidney Powell releases her Kraken evidence in front of SCOTUS, I would imagine that Joe Biden would get very serious about that kind of discussion, pick up the phone, uh, President Trump, please can we make a deal? <laughs> you know, 
a deal to save our skin and we'll 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 give you everything we'll confess everything we'll turn over all the money we got from china you know joe might say i'll i'll have hunter come in and and uh turn over the bags of cocaine i i will have hunter i tell you what he'll he'll even stop hiring chinese hookers you know we'll we'll clean up the biden family we'll send the money back to ukraine <laughs> and and the communists we we'll get the we we'll get the communists out of our lives just don't send me to a dark hole in gitmo and i'll confess to everything and i'll concede the election i would imagine that that kind of conversation is going to happen at some future date that's not that far away i would imagine and and by the way where is kamala during all of this where the heck is kamala she's disappeared and she hasn't resigned from the senate isn't that interesting you would think if if they had this thing locked down, she would have already resigned. She'd be out making statements. Oh, the, these are our amazing plans. We're going to make the world uh, a wonderful place through tyranny. <laughs> we, we're going to throw more uh, uh, young black males in prison because that's what she did. That's what she's famous for, for, for possession of small amounts of marijuana, whatever she's into. But you don't hear much from Kamala, do you? You really don't. I wonder if it's because she's waiting to see what happens because she probably knows, you know, she's not stupid. She's corrupt, but she's not stupid. She's smart enough to know that this whole thing was rigged, which brings me back to the new expanded rules of federal executions that Trump and the DOJ have just put into place. So now of course the DOJ can engage in uh, hangings and firing squads. And I want to point out on this that America was attacked in an act of cyber warfare. It's an act of war against the United States, and it, it involved multiple nations, such as China and Iran. The DOD has that evidence. They've got it. And it was carried out with malicious intent, obviously, to steal the outcome of the election and to install compromised, treasonous, you know, communist infiltrated people like Joe Biden into the White House in order to overthrow the United States of America. Now, carrying out an act of war against the United States, when you are yourself a United States citizen, that is called treason. Guess what the punishment for treason is on the battlefield? And guess who is in charge of that? It's not the DOJ, is it? It's the military, and the punishment is execution. So under current military law, anyone who engages in an act of treason against the United States government, which is what these people did, obviously, and it will be proven, they can be, in fact, executed on the spot. And that hasn't changed at all. So in reality, this change to the DOJ makes no difference because these these cases, I believe, will not be tried by the DOJ. They will be tried in military courts, military tribunals, and the DOD doesn't mess around. You commit treason to try to destroy the United States, to, in essence, force the U.S. to surrender to an enemy nation such as communist China, guess what? You get a bullet to the head, or you get publicly hanged to death, or you get thrown in a deep, dark hole. That's what happens when you try to carry out war against America and you get caught it's, it's not a pretty picture. Uh, so anyway, I don't assign a huge significance to the DOJ now allowing these options because I don't think the DOJ is going to prosecute uh, anybody, frankly. I think the DOJ is totally compromised, which is why this has to be done outside the DOJ.